There are days when we don't get a lot of lore. Then there are days when there is too much lore for a healthy mind. And then there are days when normal people think nothing major has happened. While in reality, Ezreal confirms that he's a jerk once again. And we learn what the heck Jax even is. So, Riot released three new stories. From Whom Does the Desert Know, a short story about Kassadin, which if you didn't know, that's roughly what Kassadin's name translates into. Whom Does the Desert Know would be Kai Sa Adin, in Ancient Shuriman. Then we have Lucian's story, Hunter of Shadows, and Ezreal's story, The Curator's Gambit. But more importantly, if you go to the map of Runeterra, you may notice that Ezreal left behind few of his field notes. I mean, I say few, but you can imagine my expression when I clicked on it the first time. <coughs> These field notes range from being absolutely worthless to incredibly mind-blowing. But overall, let me tell you right now, these notes are awesome for world building. I'll try to cover them going from north to south, since they are all over the map. Interestingly enough, there are only two places in map to Runeterra where Ezreal hasn't been yet. That is, if you don't count the Shadow Isles. I mean, who would willingly- <laughs> No! You don't count, you sick mongrel. We have one field note in Freljord, near Recklestake, not too far away from the borders of Demacia. But it seems like Ezreal has never been deeper in Freljord. On one side, I understand why. The freezing temperatures would be dangerous even for someone with a magical gauntlet. But on the other side, that's where you would find the most interesting artifacts. Surprisingly enough, the other place Ezreal most likely hasn't visited yet is Ionia. I'm saying most likely because it is possible that Ezreal would travel somewhere without taking notes. However, his interactions with the Vastaya in-game reveal that he has never seen one before. He has only read about them from Eduard Sant'Angelo's Vastaya Field Journal, which is an actual journal you can read on Universe 2. But the rest of the notes cover everything from Demacia all the way south to Ikathia. So, let's have a look at them. Starting in Freljord, the first of Ezreal's notes mentions a silver totem he stole from the top of a freezing mountain. This mountain was right next to Recklestake, which if you didn't know is where Ash and Trindamir got married. The mountain next to it however is a new entry. We don't really know what the silver totem would be used for, but I wouldn't be surprised if it made a comeback. From there, moving south, we get to Demacia. Here we have two different notes. One is in Gendale, which is a place briefly mentioned in Quinn's story. Ezreal reveals that this is quite the poetic place, which is why he ventured here to get a pair of kindred masks. But not just any pair of masks, he was looking for the originals, carved from the wood of supposedly bewitched Eldlock tree. He then talks about why he believes the real masks were here. A famous actress died on stage while playing the dual role of Kindred in Demacia. But the strange part was that the theater company said that the prop masks created for the performance never left her dressing room, and the masks that she wore on stage vanished. Of course we know this actress, because this actually happened in the short story about Kindred. The story was about a traveling theater moving around Demacia. Needlebrook was one of the mentioned cities here. And at the end there was a creepy twist where the actress saw nothing but lambs and wolves in the audience. And there were speculations as to what had actually happened to her. Well, at least now we know she died. The other Demacian note is from a place near Vascasia. The Vascasian timber villages were mentioned in Lux's story, Flesh and Stone. In that story Lux was running away from home, and from Galio, whom she may have awoken. And she wanted to hide in the timber villages, so it makes sense that Ezreal would kinda ridicule this place. According to his note, rumor has it a certain Demacian national treasure, one Jaro Lightfeather, was born around here. Now, originally I thought Jaro Lightfeather was Ezreal's fake name he used to travel around Demacia. Demacians don't really like mages after all. This would also fit with Pulsefire Ezreal. He uses Jaro Lightfeather as his D&D rogue paladin character. But in truth, Jaro Lightfeather is just some guy who came up with the pomade Ezreal is using. We know this because not only was a bottle of light feather pomade on Ezreal's checklist when he was adventuring, but he also ate the pomade when he had nothing else to eat. Because he packed pomade instead of food. Traveling east all the way to Noxus, we'll find another, and this time serious, field note. According to this note, Noxians make really good tacos. Wait, that's not the serious part. Before that, he mentioned that Noxians are really good at ignoring the shimmer of dark energy in the heart of their capital. Of course, this is because LeBlanc is trying to make everyone forget that something shady is happening. This doesn't reveal much to us. We already knew something evil was in there. 
Mordekaiser most likely siphoned its powers and LeBlanc might be in control of it. But that's not the important part here. What's important is that Ezreal was supposed to meet a new contact to collect some archival Noxian materials. But she never showed up. Instead, a few shady figures started following him. And one eventually handed him a rose petal. A black rose petal, to nobody's surprise. This was enough to scare Ezreal away. And he found at least one petal a day along his way back, until he reached the borders. What's interesting is that LeBlanc gives those she would like to have as her followers a waxen sigil of a black rose. Receiving it is a direct invitation to the cult. It is true that Ezreal only got a petal of the rose, so that might mean something totally different. But at least we can now speculate that LeBlanc might want Ezreal in her service. As we continue south, we reach Piltover. There is a note right next to Piltover and Zone, but it is all about Oshrava Zone, the ancient Shreeman city that served as a foundation for the modern city. Nothing major. This note is just a reference to the story we covered in our Ezreal video. Now, if we follow his trip from Piltover to the tomb of Nezuk, which is where he found his glove, we'll find quite a few of Ezreal's adventures. Starting in the sea above Shurima, there's a note marking the beginning of his journey. Apparently he was stealing some lime grog and the captain caught him. I don't know why Ezreal would be stealing alcohol on a very important journey to save his missing parents, but so be it. The crew wanted to throw him overboard, but Ezreal managed to convince them otherwise. He threw their navigator into the sea when nobody was looking. And without the navigator, the crew needed Ezreal to get them to the dock safely. So in other words, Ezreal killed the captain because he was caught stealing grog. The journey began and he is still a jerk. Continuing along the path, the next note is in the Noxian territories in northern Shurima. This note mentions that Ezreal hired Shuriman guides in Belzun. His first guide was Kazjar, a knowledgeable, charismatic and hard-working fellow, who died because an obelisk <coughs> fell on him. This isn't really connected to the main story though, because his ship was headed towards Nashrame. This is from another trip. Moving towards the tomb of Nezuk, there's a note off the path near Shurima that reads, Rumors say the ancient city has risen once more. I'm skeptical. When Ezreal's field notes say a metropolis is buried, well, it stays buried. Usually. This gives us a little bit of a time window to determine when did Ezreal's story happen. He didn't see the capital of Shurima yet, so his trip around Shurima has to be recent. But not too recent because Azir was resurrected after that. And Azir's resurrection is nearly present day. Going west of the capital, we finally get to the lost tomb of Nezuk. An ancient tyrant and the owner of Ezreal's gauntlet. Well, not anymore, Ezreal is now the owner. But this is where the tomb was. Because Ezreal destroyed it. Going further west beyond the lost tomb, we'll get to Nerimazeth. This city was the main setting for Twilight of the Gods, aka the grand story of the Darkin. Ezreal has an important note here. First of all, he mentions his own book called Origins of Ascension. The name alone hints why this city would be important. Nerimazeth was the original capital city of Shurima. This was before there was even an empire. According to Kasjar, the guide who died beneath the obelisk, the land outside of the city was home to the first iteration of what is now known as the Sun Disk. This means that the first ever Sun Disk construct was in Nerimazeth. In Ezreal's words, I'm guessing this prototype failed because, well, historically, Sun Disks don't seem to be very stable. If we go even further west, down the mountains and into the ocean, there is another note. This one simply says that Mount Targon is beautiful at night. And that he was quelling a mutiny because of Lime Grog. At first, I thought that this would mean that Ezreal actually traveled all the way around Shurima and docked here. Instead of traversing the desert to get to the tomb. But his bio mentions that he did actually cross the desert. So I wonder, who did he kill to become a captain the second time? Going all the way south, there is another note in the mountains. The first half of the note begins with Ezreal being a jerk again. Apparently Ezreal angered all eight of the Southern Dune Wanderer tribes when he stole their sacred medallion. They chased him for a week before they gave up. And in the end, Ezreal found out the medallion was fake. But the other half of the note mentions a shimmering gap opening up in a rock. Ezreal decided to check it out in the morning. But when he got there, it was gone. Now, we know a gateway to another realm that opens and closes as it pleases. Or at least as the Yordles open and close it. Yes, it is likely that Ezreal saw the portal to Bendel City. From here, going along the mountains east, we'll get to Sai Kalik. Here Ezreal mentions the Zer Sai, a swarming life form that keeps coming back no matter how many you kill. Ezreal took shelter here in a circular cavern, but he found out it was a massive Zer Sai burrow. Kazjar, the guy who died beneath the obelisk, told him that it was the lair of the Sand Mother, whom we know as Rek'Sai. 
If we go even further east to the very edge of Ikathia, we'll find another note. It simply says, I took one look at this wasteland and was like, well, that's beyond my pay grade. Then there is the last note in Shrima that I avoided on purpose. It is something so sneaky and so well hidden, it would have taken me much longer to figure out. Was it not for our Discord community? It's a simple note that says, did you know sand trolls are a thing? I, for one, did not know sand trolls were a thing. Turns out, sand trolls, totally a thing. At first, when I read it, I was just happy that we are getting more races in Runeterra. I loved the trolls and I always wanted to see more than just Trundle. But then the realization came. Let's go to Ikathia for a second. Ancient Ikathia, before the war and before the void. Ikathia was a kingdom that rebelled against the Emperor of Shurima. It was a powerful nation led by tyrant mage kings. According to some board posts, the armies of Ikathia certainly weren't just human. Just like you can find other races in other regions, Ikathia too was watered down by non-human allies. And for the longest time, we knew about one guy, a very popular champion that didn't really fit the description of a human. Yes, his skin is weird color because he is sick, but that doesn't explain his size, nor the fact that he only has three fingers. You see, Cyjax, or Jax with a prefix of Cy, a common name for desert, does fit the description of a sand troll. He has three fingers, just like Trundle, he is much bigger than a normal man, capable of wielding massive weapons, and his voice, outdated, but kinda similar to a troll. He fits it so well, there is no other way than to confirm that Jax is a troll. Not the keyboard kind of troll. Just like Trundle, he is a troll of Runeterra. Going further east into the jungle areas, here we can find two more markers. The first one mentions Paretha, a small village with Tafa flower water that's supposed to nourish you. Here a tribal shaman told Ezreal that his soul was entwined with the aspect of the Wanderer. According to Ezreal it is possible that the shaman was Targonian. But more importantly, this could be a new teaser for a possible aspect. One theory is that the aspect of the Wanderer would be connected to Nezuk. We know the Ascended are a product of Targon, and Nezuk was an Ascended Mage. Also, Ezreal now wears his gauntlet, so it is possible that something is happening here. The other theory, now that we know an aspect of the Wanderer is a thing, is that maybe Bart will finally get his own story. Maybe he won't become the actual aspect, but maybe it gets revealed that Bart is a minion of the aspect. At the end of the note we learn that near this shaman village was a temple where Ezreal got the elixir of Uloa. The other note in these jungles mentions Veil of Silver Mist, a magical place where your mind plays tricks on you. Ezreal saw himself staring back at him from behind the tree. Then the tree talked to him, and it followed him for a while. And then we learned Ezreal was high on the Tafa flower water. From here we can move north to Mudtown. Here we have a note describing Ezreal's encounter with pirates. He was captured and he played a game of Krakenhand with them. He had no idea how to play, but he won back his gauntlet and his flintlock, and most likely killed a couple of them as he escaped. And now, let's get onto the last two and very important notes. On the Blue Flame Isles, that are also called the Serpent Isles, apparently both names are right, Ezreal mentions something very interesting. There's a lot more going on than meets the eye. One priestess carries around a massive idol that I desperately want to go back and examine. I got some real cosmic vibes from that fetish. Anyway, the Buru are one of the more secretive religious groups, claiming to predate pretty much everything else on Valoran or Shurima. By the way, this confirms that we have three separate continents now. Ionia, Shurima and Valoran. I suspect their influence is much larger than anyone guesses. The important part are the cosmic vibes coming from the Eye of the God that Ilawi is carrying. There was a theory based on a couple of posts on the boards. According to that theory, Aurelian soul shouldn't really be considered a god, not when compared to something like Nagake Boros, Ilawi's god. Aurelian soul lives in only one reality. Yes, he can sense the void coming from a different realm, but Aurelian soul is still very limited. Compared to him, Nagake Boros was a real god, a being spanning across multiple realms, with Ilawi and the other priests trying to understand just a tiny portion of its ideals. With this note, Ezreal might be pushing this theory forward, and we might learn that there is another thing more powerful than Aurelian Soul, and it might be Nagake Boros. And now for the last note, we have to move away from the land and into the open oceans. Again, in Ezreal's words, there is an island here. It's not on any maps, but it's there. I was marooned on the desert rock for a week. It's home to a colony of aggressively flirtatious things. I don't know, walruses maybe? Sailors beware indeed. Now this could be a nod to two things. Either this could be the Seal Sister, the sister of Orn, Volibear and Anivia, 
We know she exists, and followers in the forms of walruses, mermaids or sirens would fit her. Or it is also possible that we might meet Earth at some point. And if that happens, it better happen on Black Friday. Because I'm not paying $4,000 for a coffin for my Earth fanfics. Hey, did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other league facts and stories? And did you know that we have need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.